Hello, welcome to another video. This is a video I have desired to do a while ago, but I just keep postponing, but this is the day. And we want to see how we go from differentiation of a rational function from first principles to the quotient rule. So as you can see, whenever you have a function of x divided by an, a function of x, and you want to take the derivative, we usually use the quotient rule, but we want to see how we can go from this definition to that quotient rule that you have memorized. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we're going to do is follow the same procedure we do for all differentiation from first principles, which is using the definition of the derivative. So in this case, I'm going to say that f prime of x will be equal to f of x plus h, which would be this, which is going to be u of x plus h divided by, oh, it's the limit. Let's not forget it's the limit as h goes to zero. Uh, this is going to be v of x plus h. Okay, so that's this part minus f of x, which is this. So it's going to be u of x divided by v of x. And everything is divided by h. So this is what we have. Mm, what can we do? Well, we can put these two together into a single fraction, which looks like we'll be multiplying this by this, multiplying this by this, and multiplying these two together, but these two will come down into the denominator, which gives us the limit as h goes to zero of, you're going to have v of x multiplied by u of h plus, sorry, x plus h, okay, minus, we do this multiplication, it's going to be u of x multiplied by v of h plus x, okay, uh, x plus h x plus h. Okay, that's how that should be. And then these two multiply each other, but they come down here and we're going to have h. And then we're going to have, let's write this first, v of x. We actually don't need to put that in parentheses because it's just multiplication of h, x plus h rather. So we have two functions. We don't need to put this. Okay. Mm. Now I'm going to do something, and it's, it's some tiny manipulation. I'm going to introduce something that's not there, but I'm going to take it away immediately, okay? So see what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a function of v of x and u of x together. I'm going to introduce them here, and I'm going to also take it away. So see what I'll do when we get here. So we're going to say f prime of x will be equal to the limit as h goes to zero of, now watch this, I'm going to write v of x, so it's going to be v as a function of x multiplied by u as a function of x plus h, okay? Now, here I'm going to write minus v of x times u of x. Now, this was not there, okay? Because this was not there, I have to add it back because I'm subtracting it. I'm going to add it back, but instead of adding it back immediately, I will add it back at the end. So let me write this first. Okay, this is going to be minus u of x times v of x plus h. And then I will have, um, I'm going to add this guy back, plus v of x, u of x. Okay, and all of this divided by h. Okay, <laughs> see this line is just this simplified, but I just did a modification here by introducing v of x, u of x, which I'm going to add back. So it has not changed what I have there, but just looking at this makes life a lot easier because now I have the limit as h goes to zero, I can deal with these two separately. What is common to this expression and this expression? I have v of x, so I can take out v of x, and inside, I'm gonna have u of x plus h. Let's use um, a bracket. Let's do this. 
Okay, u of x plus h minus what is left is u of x. That's what's on top. And here, what's common to this term and this term? I see u of x is common. So I'm going to write u of x. And with another bracket, I'm going to have v of x plus h minus v of x. Nice. And all of this divided again by, oh no, not just h. I forgot to write this. I have v of x. <laughs> And I have v of x plus h here. Okay, nice. So I write the same thing. I write h and I write v of x. And then I write v of x plus h. Okay, this doesn't have to be there. I keep trying to put that there. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do. I am going to Keep this down and take this h. You see how I, I caused this, these two to come down when I multiplied them together. Now I'm going to keep these two down, but I'm going to push this back up into each of these so that I skillfully write this as the limit as h goes to zero of, now watch this, v of x. Now on top, I'm going to have this. I will have, um, let's put this. In brackets, it's going to be um, u of x plus h minus u of x. But I'm going to now push this h, this h here. I'm going to push it under this one. And I'll do the same thing. And all of this will be divided by h, well, sorry, divided by v of x and v of x plus h. So what do I have? Now, if I do this subtraction, I'm going to have the same thing, u of x, and then I have a bracket, which has v of x plus h minus v of x, all of it divided by h. Nice. What do you think I have? At this point, if I take the limit of this, because I can introduce the limit to each of the terms, because as long as each of those limits exist or the functions are, continu functions are continuous, I can introduce the limit. So what is the limit of v of x as h goes to zero? It's just v of x. So this is equal to v of x. What is the limit of this expression as h goes to zero? Well, this is the definition of the derivative of v of u of x. Look, looks like this, exactly. The limit as h goes to zero of this is the derivative of u of x. Minus I do the same thing here. This is going to be u of x. I do the same definition. This is the definition of v prime of x, the derivative of v of x. If I take the limit of the bottom, well, there's no h here, so it is v of x. If I take the limit of this, it's going to be, because this goes to 0, v of x. So what I have at the bottom here is v of x times v of x which is v squared of x. And this is your f prime of x. And this is your quotient rule. I tried to manage the board so I don't have to erase anything. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.